Hi everyone, my name is Emma Moyer and I am a model. Um, also a few other things like a career advisor and career coach and yoga teacher and meditation teacher and singer and blah blah blah. Um, I do a lot of things, but I am here to discuss my time at Coco Rocha Model Camp, so um, that's what I'm going to be talking about. And um, I didn't really have any like Q and A questions planned out, um, but if after this video, like you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them um, like below in the comment section, um, or you can even send me like a DM to my uh, like Instagram. Um, so. I just figured I would go over kind of like how the process went to start, like and how I even got to that part. Um, so basically, um, as I said, I'm a yoga teacher. So I have another yoga teacher friend who is also pursuing modeling and she went to this camp and I, I noticed it on her profile and I thought, oh, that looks really cool. Um, so I ended up looking into what the modeling camp was about and who Coco Rocha was because sadly to say, like, I didn't really know who she was, um, before going. Uh, she's one of, like, the best, uh, models in the industry, and she is coined the Queen of Pose, um, by Tyra, Tyra Banks, I think. I don't know, I'm really, I'm really bad at celebrities and all of that, like, I will just say, really, really bad at that, so my apologies if it's not Tyra Banks, but, um, any who's, I ended up like looking into the camp um then I spoke with my friend who said that she loved going that it was a really really great opportunity for her um and that she learned a lot so I decided I would give it a shot and apply um just like a short application they asked for some information um my experience within modeling which at that point hadn't been too too like substantial I mean I had done like some test shoots with photographers um and was with an agency but that agency wasn't really giving me any work um at least they weren't sending me work that was relevant to my schedule and what I was doing and just like who I am and what I'm capable of doing like I can't just take off of work two days ahead for something in Scranton that only pays a hundred dollars like mm, no that's not gonna happen so Anyways, I ended up going um, and applying, and I was accepted into the program, so that was pretty cool. And I know um, they are picky about who goes, so you do need to have like some sort of connections and some sort of experience in the industry. Like you can't just kind of be like, well, I want to be a model, but I have like absolutely no experience. Like they do want to see that you're actively pursuing it and doing things um, to like get into the industry, basically. Um, so they sent me an email saying like congratulations you were accepted and um I did sit on it for for a bit um to be honest I was in a relationship and now I'm back in a relationship with the same guy um but at the time we were really not in a great spot and um my brain was not in a good place uh to really be doing something like that for myself so I didn't go immediately um and actually ended up signing up for it once we had broken up um we ended up getting back together and we were together like when i attended the camp so um and we're still together like we're working through things but anyways um yeah that's kind of how that happened but i think it took about maybe like six months to a year for me to actually like form formally accept the offer and go into a camp like i kind of kept on putting it off and I think another reason too was like it was a lot of money and I did have to pull honestly like the majority of my savings out to attend the camp um I would say if you're not in a financial spot to do that I wouldn't um there's a lot of other resources out there where you can learn um you don't necessarily need to have that one-on-one -on -one and like group experience even though it is really amazing, it's also really expensive and not feasible for everyone. Um, and there's other more affordable options at like local agencies as well. So always keep that in mind. Um, I'm not like discounting anything. Like I think that it was a great experience, but if you're like in between like paying your rent and going to model camp, like obviously pay your rent. Um, I hope everyone knows that, but I just wanted to say that. Um, so don't think like 
I, I just took out all my savings and like I, I still live at home with my family. I have a full-time job, like I have income and everything. So I'll be able to replenish my savings pretty quickly. Um, I just wanted to put that out there so it, it doesn't sound like um, we should all just be making like bad choices, right? Okay, so basically what happened is I did send them an email back and I picked a date. Um, they sent me over a contract, I signed that contract, then I ended up paying. Um, there was like a few different payment options. You could either pay like out front, outright, like the full price, or you could break it down into a payment plan. Um, because I had the money already in my savings, I just figured let me like save the few hundred dollars and just pay out front and pay the full price. Um, so that's what I did. And then they sent me a few documents. Um, there was like, I guess kind of like a questionnaire that they wanted you to fill out. Um, with like any questions that you had and just they had some questions about me so I filled that out before getting to the camp uh, but they'll also just have you fill it out once you get there and um, they also sent me the schedule which was like way ahead of time so I had a lot of time to like look over it and like figure out like what I wanted to do and like kind of how it was gonna go um and the schedule did because like it did release like months in advance the schedule wasn't exactly the way it was um on paper like it was varied a little bit, but that's okay. Um, or you know what? I totally just went to a yoga retreat um, last weekend and I'm getting confused. Actually, no, but it was pretty much to a T for this. Um, yeah, there wasn't too much like getting off track of the schedule at all. Um, sorry, I'm just like so busy and have so much stuff going on. I'm getting confused between model camp and my yoga retreat. Okay, um, they also sent a packing list, which was, like, really, really helpful, um, because I probably wouldn't have brought, I definitely wouldn't have brought, like, the themed outfits at all, um, the other things I, I would have thought of pretty much, but it was kind of helpful to have some direction as opposed to, like, what the hell do I bring, because I have, like, a closet full of clothes, and what do they want me to wear, you know, um, so yeah, so I used that and then I packed additional things on top of that that I wanted to have. Um, and obviously like all the essential kind of things too that a woman would need. Um, but yeah, so I think I ended up packing way more than I probably did. Um, and funny enough, I actually ended up arriving on the first day around like five o'clock. Um, and a lot of other people were arriving, like, and checking into the hotel. And the hotel had, like, a parking garage, um, at the bottom. And you had to take an elevator to get to the lobby. And it's valley parking, so, like, you couldn't, like, self-park. You just, like, left your car there, had to take out, like, all of your luggage all at once. And, like, bring it up, and they would park your car. And luckily, like, the valet guy was able to help me move all of my stuff from the car into um like the elevator waiting area um but once i was there i was like i had do not have enough arms for this like i need to be an octopus to move all this stuff upstairs uh so just kind of standing there awkwardly um because i'm not from the area i was like driving into new york first time ever so um that was a little interesting but um yeah a couple like I was gonna say flight attendants, but they were definitely pilots. A couple pilots like came along and they were like, oh, do you need help bringing this upstairs? And I was like, oh yeah, like if you don't mind, that would be really, really helpful. Um, so it, like helps me like put it in the elevator and stuff. And then like I went up and it was super easy. Um, they did have like assistance there and everything. So once I got up there, at first I did start checking in with like the actual hotel, but then there was an assistant that came over and she was like, oh, like you're gonna check in separately with us like you don't have to check in with the hotel and like I wasn't aware so I was like oh okay um so then I checked in there and pretty much like got ready and then we had um orientation and introductions and just a class about like portfolios and like what to put in your portfolio what not to put in your portfolio um how to do a portfolio whether you want to do it on paper or digital like we discussed all that kind of stuff um, then we had dinner that was at 730 and we were having that in cocktail attire. So I was already in my cocktail attire for the portfolio class, which I probably should have waited, but, um, it was kind of funny. Um, and then nine o'clock was like the end of the program for the day. So we we're pretty much like all just like dismissed and 
you know, you could have free time or if you're an early bird, you just go to bed. Um, I was like up until 1 a.m. though, cause I'm crazy, but, um, okay, day two, we had breakfast in the lobby. That was around like eight o'clock. And then at nine to 12.30, we had a pose class. So we did all of these exercises. Um, we like discussed how like music makes us feel emotions and stuff. Like we should probably all like kind of understand that and know that cause I'm assuming everyone here listens to music. Um, but yeah, we discussed like making playlists um, to like help us feel these emotions. Um, ideally the emotions that like you're trying to portray in the art or like the pose that you're doing for the photographer. Um, and then we also just like did some actual like physical movement type posing and um, like played around with pose uh, while listening to music. So that was really cool. Um, and then we had lunch in the Metropolitan Room. Um, then 1.30 to 3.30, we did a runway class in the studio, which like, it didn't kill me, but it was pretty difficult. Like I did not realize how hard it was to do a runway walk. I did not realize that you walk with your, um, with your shoulder blades literally together and your shoulders like completely back. I mean, like in yoga, we have um, this pose called mountain pose and you usually like roll your shoulders back and down and your arms are kind of like down and relax. But no, this is like, like literally like all the way back. I feel like I'm like, like I have like wings or something. Um, so that was really cool to learn and I got a lot out of that. I'm not sure if I'll ever do runway just because I am only five, six, but, um, you know, never say never and tradition can always be challenged. So there you go. Um, okay. So then we also, um, had an opportunity to buy merch, like the sweatshirt that I have here, which also I love. It's super comfortable. Um, and I love the color. So, um, 3.30 to 3.45 on the second day was our final time to buy merch. Um, there also was a time to buy merch when you were checking in in the lobby between 2 to 5. Um, so that would have been like another opportunity to do that. Okay. So then we also had another kind of like just talk session where we were talking about expectations versus realities. Um, and that was just like kind of like a Q&A session where you could just like literally ask James, who is Coco's husband, who's um, like an agent and he also um, owns, I think it's Nomad Mo uh, Management, which is in LA and Miami. Um, and also Coco, just ask them questions about the industry, questions about like, you know, things that they've gone through, really anything. You could literally ask them like anything. They're pretty much an open book. Um, and then we had dinner and that was 80s night attire. Um, honestly, I was so tired by that time. Like I did not even get changed out of what I was wearing for pose class. Like I, I was just exhausted and did not feel like getting changed, even though like I did bring an outfit. I was like, nah, I'm not feeling it. Um, and then I'm pretty sure that me and my roommate that night went and got Cheesecake Factory. It might've been that night or it might've been the night before or after. I can't remember exactly. If my, if you know me, my memory is not the greatest. Um, but at some point in this venture, we ended up getting um, cheesecake. I don't know if it was that night because I feel like it, I I feel like it might have been that night actually. But yeah, okay. Um, and then the night of the first day, we did end up. Um, we were trying to go to Target because she wanted to get something for '80s night and for like the Hawaiian night. But um, we like Target closed like 15 minutes early, so we weren't able to go there. But we ended up going to. Um, is it called Burlington Burlington Coat Factory which I hadn't been to in like a bazillion years um since I was in like elementary school but it actually has some pretty good stuff like I bought a few sports bras um and like these really cute shoes I actually have them in my closet I can like pop them out um I was just 
you know when you're like you're shopping but you're not shopping for something but you still like find it and you're like this is exactly what i needed it's pride month and i was like oh my god these are first of all they're they're tiva they're like a really good brand um and they're so cute and like i love the platform and i also just love pride so um i have friends that are in the lgbt community all of that completely supportive but yes um that was kind of what happened uh the first and second day our third day was the shoot day and that day was definitely really long um we were broken up into two groups so um not everyone was shooting at the same time there was like the first group shot in the morning and then the second group shot in the afternoon so i was in group two um so for me um well for everyone we had breakfast in the lobby if if you wanted to eat um and then there was a shoot day prep class and it was literally just 15 minutes and they talked about like expectations and kind of how things were going to go um so that was just for 15 minutes and then group one had a photo shoot in the studio so that so they were doing their thing like they were getting their hair and makeup done they were like going through and having their pictures taken they're like taking behind the scenes shots of the other people getting their stuff done once they were done with their stuff like it was a whole big production um which i wasn't there for because i was in group two and we were in a class that was um discussions on agencies social media branding and contracts um, that sounds super boring and it sounds like something you'd be like, oh, I'd rather just take more pictures or something, but it was really helpful, um, to be honest. And I feel like that kind of stuff is like looked at as like, oh, I should just like hire someone else for this or whatever. But like, you do want to have like a decent understanding of it yourself too. Um, so they ended up asking us like while we were in that class, if anyone wanted to go down early to get started, to get started on like their hair and makeup. Um, so I volunteered because I was like, that's fine. Um, because I said we could just come back for the branding and contracts portion later. Um, so that's what I did. So I went down. Um, I'm pretty sure they did my hair first. And then they had me go to, um, the makeup artist, which makes sense. Because even when I'm doing my own hair and makeup, I do my hair and then I do my makeup. It's just logical. Um in the middle of me getting my makeup done, it was lunchtime. So he held off on doing like my lipstick and all of that. And it still like stayed on, like all my other makeup stayed on even as I was eating lunch. Like I ate lunch outside, it was really nice out. Um, and then once I ate and I kind of like got some things together, went back down, met up with my makeup artist again. Um, he finished out the look. I did give him like some inspiration of a look and we didn't do it like exactly how it was, but it turned out like really awesome um and i think better than even like the photo you know um it was nice as like a um an initial like inspiration but it's nice to be able to like take creativity with it and not just replicate the exact same thing and i think that's just art in general and that's why i love art um okay so then I had my makeup done, then they had me go and take um, like some full body shots and we did like a whole shoot on that. That took about 10 minutes. Um, and we were only allowed to get one picture out of each shoot, which really sucks because like I saw the pictures that they took and they were all looking really good. And like, I wouldn't post multiple of them, but I was like, damn, like they're so good. Like I wish, wish I could have that to like reference back on and like, for posing and stuff like that. But anyways, um, we went through that. And then um, I guess in between that, there wasn't really much to do. I pretty much just went from that shoot to um, makeup again. And they just like retouched up. There wasn't much for them to do. They also redid my hair. So like I had my hair back, you know, in like a pony and everything. And it was really like slicked back. They took it out, um, they did some teasing, they put in a little bit of curls, uh, and it was very like 80s-esque glam kind of going on, at least that's what I'm taking it as. Um, but anyways, so 
then I went on to the next photographer and that photographer was specifically doing headshots and oh my god she did an amazing job like holy crap seriously amazing um yes so did headshots there and again only getting one picture back um we were promised only two pictures and unfortunately we weren't allowed to like ask for any more or like pay for any additional ones um that's just how it was so um and that's okay because there's going to be a lot of other opportunities to get more pictures so um that's pretty much how that went and then um what I would have been doing if I hadn't like come out of that class early is I would have been going around taking behind the scenes of other people and I did do a little bit of that like as I was doing my own shoots and in between they did tell us not to um but I still like wanted to kind of feel like I was contributing and stuff so I did a little bit um but yeah once I was done with my shoots they had me go back up because there was the branding and the contract still going on that I hadn't attended and wasn't present for so I just like came into the class midway um and they went over branding and contracts and all that which was really helpful because I feel like I've been having such a hard time branding myself because I do so many different things like I have my nine to five, I'm a yoga teacher, I teach meditation, um, like what else? I sing, like I, I like I do a lot of different things and sometimes it's hard not to get um, kind of boxed into a category. Um, but I feel like throughout my entire life, I've always just been kind of viewed at, as like a jack of all trades or a jill of all trades, I guess, because obviously I'm not a jack um I'm not a boy but um yeah I've just always done a lot of different things I mean I went to school for art I used to be a makeup artist and do makeup for other people and clearly I do makeup on myself and everything and I used to do that a lot more often than I do now um working a full time nine to five takes up a lot of my time and let me tell you I'm not waking up at 5 a.m to do a full face of makeup and blow out my hair every day like no I'm not doing that there's no point I mean I, I go to work I look good but I don't yeah it's not that kind of a job um but yeah so that's kind of that we did a group shot which I'm just realizing I don't think I've gotten back yet so I want to check into that um and selfies Oh yeah, we took pictures with Coco. I think that's what I, I'm just look, looking over the schedule that's like printed out and just going through that. Um, the selfies were just like pictures that we took with Coco. It was super cute. I also got a video because my roommate took one. Also, my roommate was so fucking nice. Like, I don't know how they picked like who was rooming with who, but like they did a really good job because we like vibed literally from like instantly. We just like clicked. Um, she's from... Missouri I think I think it's like Kansas City Missouri or Louisiana I don't know I'm that that area of the United States I've never been to and like confuses the hell out of me but I think it's Missouri I'm pretty sure it's Missouri either ways I'm going to visit her and she's probably gonna come visit me so that would be super cool and I will update you once that happens um yeah then at six o'clock we had a final discussion just talked about how things went um, additional questions, stuff like that. That went on for a while. Um, and then at 7.30 we had dinner and that was our Hawaiian night attire. So super cool. Um, I brought like a really cute, uh, pink dress and I did decide this time to like get changed, put on my outfit and everything. Um, even though I looked good in like the other thing too. Um, and then eight o'clock was again, the end of the program. And then we were just allowed to do whatever we wanted. Um, so me and my roommate had gotten white claws <laughs> and just uh, drank them and um, just like hung out with some of the other girls um, and people that were there at the camp. So it was super fun. Um, we we're up until like midnight or something like that. Uh, so it was definitely, definitely every night was like a late night for all of us, I think unless people were like more self-disciplined and like go to bed early but um 
I don't know. I wouldn't change it for the world. It was really fun. And I think I got a lot out of it as well. And the area where we were staying was like super safe. Um, really, really nice. Uh, New York. So super cool to like walk around and see. All right. And then on day four, we had breakfast. Um, so we got to like see everyone again. And like, you know, just talk a little bit, like catch up. Seriously, we were like so busy throughout the entire camp that we never really had time to like sit down and talk with every freaking person there because there were like 30 something or other people attending the camp. Like that's a lot. And like I said, there wasn't a lot of time like in between the activities and things to actually just like talk with people aside from like lunch and breakfast and stuff. Um, and like, I don't think they meant for it to be like kind of clicky, but it did kind of end up like that because certain people like got to know certain people. And, and I know I'm like that too. Like if I don't know anyone and then, you know, I ended up kind of bonding with my roommate right off the bat. Like I was pretty much like sitting with my roommate the entire time because like we just vibed really well. And I think pretty much everyone else did the same thing. So there wasn't a whole lot of like mingling and intermixing of people until the end when we really did have more time to like talk around and like walk around and like get to know other people there too. Um, and also just like, it was only three days. Um, so it's also just like not a whole lot of time to get to know everyone there unless, you know, they did like some icebreaker stuff and like, you know, go around and like say your name and stuff, but I'm not a name person unless I'm like talking to you multiple times. Um, and like your name is being thrown in there as that's happening. I'm probably not going to remember your name. I will remember your face though. I never forget a face. Like literally that's probably like an FBI agent because of that. But, um, yeah, after breakfast, we all like said our goodbyes, like hugged and everything. Um, we're all in like a group chat on Instagram. So we're able to stay in touch and like keep each other posted on everything that's going on, like ask questions. So it's a really nice like community that was built through it too, which I thought was really cool. Um, and then I was able to like connect more with other people that I wasn't able to like physically exactly connect with there through conversation. Um, and then at, at 11 AM you had to be checked out. So, um, in between like breakfast and chatting and everything, like we did have to get our stuff down and check out of the hotel. Um, funny situation I actually ended up leaving my flip-flops there um like I, I kind of lost them the night before the checkout and like I did report that like I didn't know where they were like I, I knew where I left them but they weren't there when I went to go get them so then someone must have moved them somewhere and then in the morning there was a note underneath our door and it said like for me with my name on it, it said your flip-flops were found in the kitchen. They're at the front desk. And I was like, oh great. Like I'll just like get those like as like I'm checking out or whatever. Um, and then of course, cause there's like a million other things going on. And I have like all my luggage and stuff. I completely forgot. Um, but they were really, really cool about it. Um, I ended up like calling. I had already left, like, like left like and drove like an hour out. So I wasn't gonna turn around go back just to get my flip-flops and then drive another hour like that would have been crazy so I called them they told me that I could like either um come back to get them or that they could ship them if I like created a shipping label um so I did look up online to see if I could like buy them again but they were sold out in my size um so I ended up just like buying a shipping label from FedEx and they just like attached it to the package and shipped them to me it was super easy peasy um, I just had to email the label to them. So I had never done that before, um, but it worked out. I got my flip-flops back. TBH, I don't know where they are right now, but they're probably downstairs in, in my living room. Um, but they're they're really cute. They're um, Javiana's brand and they have like a black uh, sole and then kind of like gunmetal, like really dark, charcoal kind of gray um I don't know what you call it like a thong like like a flip-flop thong kind of shape and it's glittery and I couldn't find them anywhere else and they were sold out I'd gotten them at Nordstrom Rack for like $25 or whatever and they were sold out on there in my size so I'm glad that worked out but 
Yeah, I mean, I think it was a really great um, experience and opportunity and I learned so much from it. And I know I'm gonna be using it in um, modeling and everything, but even just like everyday life and like with boosting like confidence and um, just like understanding myself more and being more assertive and like just bold and confident basically. Um, but yeah, that was my experience and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, if you have any questions, post them in the chat below and, um, like and subscribe this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Oh.